In this hands-on video, we talk all about controlling the iPhone 10. Now, a lot of the same concepts that you're familiar with from previous iPhones apply here, but there are some definite new concepts to learn as well, primarily because the iPhone 10 lacks a home button. Let's check it out. First of all, some terminology. The sleep wake button is now called the side button. Of course, your volume buttons are still there and those are involved in some of the things we'll be talking about later. And then there's this, the home indicator. This is what helps to replace the home button on your iPhone 10. So how to wake iPhone 10? First, you can just press the side button to wake it up. Simple, right? Or you can just raise to wake. Nothing we haven't seen before so far. But now we also get tap to wake. That's new for the iPhone 10. And there's also this, the leather folio, which can wake your device just by opening the front cover. Look for a full review later. Putting your iPhone 10 to sleep, just press the side button or close the cover on your leather folio. You can temporarily disable Face ID by pressing the side button and one of the volume buttons simultaneously until you feel a vibration. And then Face ID is temporarily disabled. Now here comes the fun stuff. How to navigate home. Well, there's no home button, but there is the home indicator. And all you need to do is simply swipe up from the home indicator to go back home. Yep, just swipe up like this. What about the app switcher? Well, simply swipe up and pause. And the app switcher opens up just like that. Let's try it again. So we simply swipe up, pause, and the app switcher opens. But what about closing apps? Well, simply open up the app switcher, tap and hold on one of the app switcher cards, and then tap the little minus sign that appears in the upper left hand corner of each card. You can also swipe up on one of the cards as well, just like that. Now here's something that's new and something I really like, quickly switching between apps. Yes, you can do that simply by swiping either left or right on the home indicator. This is super awesome a quick way to navigate serially between each app. But you can also open the app switcher and go directly to the app that you're looking for as well. So you can use the first method to quickly switch between recently used apps and use the app switcher method for everything else. How to enter and exit edit mode, which is also called wiggle mode by some people. Basically you tap and hold on an app icon and you can use a little X in the upper left hand corner of each icon to remove it or hide it. Once you want to exit wiggle mode, you can tap the done button or simply swipe up. You'll need to press and hold the side button to invoke Siri since there's no home button. And of course, you can also invoke Siri with your voice. To open notification center, simply swipe down on the left side of the sensor housing in the upper left hand corner like this. To access widgets, simply swipe right on notification center. You can also do so while on the first page of the home screen. Invoking Control Center is basically the opposite of Notification Center. Just swipe down on the right side of the center housing in the upper right hand corner to invoke Control Center. Invoking Spotlight Search hasn't changed at all. Simply swipe down while on the home screen, just like that. And as you would imagine, 3D Touch is the same as well. Simply deep press on an eligible target to invoke 3D Touch quick actions and other useful shortcuts and content. In just my two cents, but 3D Touch is such an underrated feature on the iPhone. Now reachability is here, but you will need to enable it in the settings. But once it's enabled, simply swipe down on the home indicator to invoke reachability. And this is really handy if you're one handing your iPhone. For example, right here in Safari, it allows me to quickly reach the address bar with one hand. Now, enabling reachability is just a matter of going to settings, general, accessibility, and enabling the reachability toggle. Now, you will need to be running iOS 11.1 or later to do that. Invoking Apple Pay has changed as well. Now it's a double press of the side button, and then you can verify with Face ID. Taking a screenshot has changed too. Press the volume up button and the side button at the same time to take a screenshot. And lastly, to force restart your iPhone 10, press volume up, volume down, and hold the side button. So volume up, volume down, press and hold the side button and continue doing so until your iPhone reboots. 
So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a brief look at some of the new gestures and interface interactions that you're going to experience with the iPhone 10. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Thank you.